When you think of samurai, you think of noble warriors in intricate armor, fighting for their shoguns in an attempt to gain new territory. Noble warriors of Japanese descent who come from a long line of the warrior class. Blade masters who dueled with honor, not unlike chivalry. Now what you probably didn't think of was a black man among these ranks. Yet, in the pages of history, one such man did live among not just the samurai, but the most feared warlord and unifier of the times, Oda Nobunaga. This man was simply named Yasuke. How's it going everybody? I'm Klidge and welcome to the Goatman History. Now, covering obscure members of the historical record is nothing new for me, but I want to branch out from my usual purview of simply covering fake characters, to just covering people in history that I find fascinating. The existence of samurai who were not Japanese is a topic that I enjoy a lot, from the Scotsman Thomas Blake Glover to Giuseppe Chiara the Italian samurai. Those who were able to join the warrior class of Japan have always been fascinating. Yasuke's story though is one that stands out however because it may have changed Japanese history as a whole. Let's start from the very beginning. There isn't really a beginning. We don't have a date given for when he was born or even where he was born. From my research, most historians place him as being from Mozambique. This is because of one line from an Italian journal by the Jesuit priest Francois Solier that puts forth the statement that Yasuke was likely from Mozambique. Great. Other claims have him being a captured soldier who was enslaved and sold in India, where he eventually bought his freedom and worked either as a soldier or a bodyguard. In fact, the only thing that seems to remain consistent throughout is that at one point in time, Yasuke was an enslaved person. There are also claims of him being a Dinka because of his exceptionally dark skin color and height, but as he lacked the traditional face tattoos that the Dinka men would have had, this theory is often disregarded. Regardless of his origins, he arrived in Japan in 1579 working for a Jesuit missionary from Italy named Alessandro Valagnano. Now, something that is important to be kept in mind is that he was not enslaved at the time of him arriving in Japan. There is evidence to show that he was more likely an indentured servant, but a strong indicator towards his freedom is that he was actually able to speak Japanese. This implies that he was meant to converse with the locals rather than be relegated to mere manpower. He would work and live in Japan for two years until Valagnano brought him along to the capital city of Kyoto, where his exotic appearance caught not just the interest of the locals, but none other than the first great unifier of Japan, Oda Nobunaga himself. Nobu was so impressed and fascinated by his skin tone that the warlord accused him of being covered in ink and promptly had him strip and scrub himself down to prove that this was not the case. Now, I'm sure that someone in the audience just threw open eyebrow and is planning a Twitter campaign to cancel a 16th century warlord as if this is the worst thing that he ever did, but let me give some extra context here. Japan was an incredibly isolated country at the time, and still kind of is, but not to this degree. The most foreign interaction that they got before missionaries showed up was Koreans and Chinese, both of which were normally done for both war and maybe sometimes commerce. You know, except for that one time a Russian showed up in a UFO, but that's a story for another time. Point being, black people were a rarity among rarities, and Yasuke was described as being extremely dark. He was described by a retainer of Tokugawa Ieyasu as being six foot two and black as coal. So, in their mind, this would be the equivalent to someone who is blue showing up in Times Square. We'd assume that they were a stray member of the Blue Man group and try and get them to wash themselves off too. As soon as Nobu realized that this man was indeed just black, he took a major liking to him. The book The Chronicles of Nobunaga speak incredibly highly of him as a fine man with strong features. After about two months, Yasuke would depart from Kyoto with Valagdano to visit other warlords in the area, but would return after about two weeks. It is not made explicitly clear when what happened next did, but at some point in time, it seems that Yasuke left the service of Valagnano and entered into the service of Nobunaga. Some sources indicate that this happened soon after Nobu's first meeting with the man, but if that was the case, then why would he leave to continue his work with Valagnano? Hard to say. This is the part of history that's incredibly frustrating. Regardless, we know that he was one of Nobunaga's retainers this same year. Nobunaga had a bit of a fascination with the man, possibly because he was the only member of Nobunaga's retainers that wasn't Japanese. Nobu was also very generous towards him, providing him with a home and occupation as a sword bearer and many ceremonial items to essentially indicate that Yasuke was officially a member of the crew. Now, Yasuke was more than just a converted missionary. He was also trained in the ways of swordsmanship by an unknown source, and while we don't have any records of how he fared with the sword, we know that he survived at least three battles, which is an impressive feat for someone who may have had no military training. Perhaps Yasuke's most influential role in history comes from the death of Nobunaga. In 1582, Oda Nobunaga was betrayed by one of his generals Akechi Mitsuhide at the Honoji Temple. Nobu had a love for the Honoji Temple and would often visit it before major battles. This was one such occasion, and as such, he only brought 30 of his closest retainers with him, including Yasuke. Akechi Mitsuhide had a massive force of 13,000 to take the temple. Naturally, things went very badly for Nobu, and the temple was set on fire with him inside. Now, 
Seppuku is more than just stabbing yourself with a knife, it's a whole ritual. After one commits to stabbing themselves in the stomach and eviscerating their interior and making it an exterior, once they hit the part where the pain is too unbearable, they indicate to a friend of theirs who has been recruited for the occasion, usually an incredibly loyal comrade, to then cut off their head to stop the pain and kill them. Now, because the details on what happened in the interior are a little bit fuzzy, it is believed that Mori Ranmaru was the one who chopped off his head, though some believe that it was Yasuke himself as Ranmaru set the temple on fire. What we do know is that Yasuke was responsible responsible for taking the head of Nobu and fleeing the temple with it. While this sounds odd, if Akechi Mitsuhide had gotten the head, he could present it to all of Japan with the definitive claim that he killed Nobunaga and as a result gained much of Nobu's power. However, without the head, there was no direct proof and thus no claim to take the place of Nobunaga. This prevented Mitsuhide from getting a foothold and his forces were eventually snuffed out by Tokugawa Ieyasu and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the other two great unifiers of Japan. So effectively, Yasuke being given the job of head bearer changed changed Japanese history as we know it today. Yasuke would flee to Nobunaga's son and rightful heir, Oda Nobutada, to inform him of what had transpired. Nobutada took up arms for the coming invasion, but was horribly outmatched as well, having a fortress of only 200 against Mitsuhide's 13,000. As such, Nobutada committed seppuku as well. Now, what exactly happened to Nobunaga's head is beyond me. It was probably chucked into a river or something where Mitsuhide's forces couldn't get to it, but to my knowledge, its whereabouts are unknown and my search history includes where is Nobunaga's head. We do know that Yasuke would be captured by Mitsuhide's forces and he was brought before his former comrade without the head. Mitsuhide declared that because Yasuke was an animal and not Japanese, he was not deserving of death and sent him to a nearby Jesuit mission camp. From there, he vanishes from the annals of history. There are a number of theories that exist as to what became of Yasuke. These range from him becoming re-enslaved at the mission camp to him settling down in Japan. However, nothing is known for certain. I think that the likelihood of him becoming a slave after the fact is near non-existent, because at that point we probably would have found something about him. And thus, it is more likely that he settled in the mountains or joined a temple as a monk. Or, maybe more depressingly, he may have committed seppuku himself. I like to believe that he lived out the rest of his life in Japan with the talking head of Nobunaga, but that's just me. That's all I've got for you on the historical side of things. Yasuke is a fascinating character in history, given the time and area that he appears. His impact on pop culture as well is enormous, and he is seen as a well-loved figure in Japan. But that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching, do the YouTube stuff, leave suggestions for more historical deep dives down below. I've got links down there as well to all my stuff, but for now, keep your chin up. Peace. Now, regardless of his origins, he arrived in Japan in 1579, working for a Jesuit, working for a Jesuit mission, working for a Jesuit mission. <sighs> regardless of his origins, he arrived in Japan in 1579, working for a Jesuit. Working for a Jesuit missionary from a working for a Jesuit missionary. Oh my god, dude! Working for a Jesuit missionary from. Regardless of his origins, he arrived in Japan in 1579, working for a Jesuit. Uh, regardless of his origins, he arrived in Japan in 1579, working for a Jesuit. Jesuit, Jesuit, Jesuit. It's Jesuit.